I'm sort of better known when you walk down the streets at being that sort of Olympic, World, European and Commonwealth champion. It's crazy really how many people still say, I remember that night and where I was, uh, which is madness after all these years. I'm excited for the next 20 years. I've got no insight in ever wanting to stop what I do. Always having people you look up to and role models and, yeah. you know, I always did in, in sport, always, all the way through. In second place, Gunnell comes fast and she's got to attack a heart. If you win an Olympic gold medal, you're like, right, well, that's one. fine, what's next? You're so scared of failure. You're so scared of not being that athlete. You're so scared of what people are going to say. Young woman is the Olympic champion, the world champion, and the world record holder. What is it actually going to take to get there? Hello and welcome back to Rocket Pod. On today's show, we're joined by Sally Gunnell. Sally is a Olympic gold medalist and... As many of you know, Sally was our first guest on season one when we first launched Rocket Pod. Um, so we're delighted to revisit Sally um, and her journey um, and learning learn about what's next for, for Sally. Yeah, it was great uh, meeting her for the first time. Obviously, I wasn't here mm-hmm. when uh, she first came on, but it was an absolute pleasure and I definitely learned a lot. So enjoy. Welcome, Sally. Sally... Welcome back to Rocket Pod. Thank you. Gosh, I can't believe you just said three years. Wow, yeah. since that first episode. Yeah, and That's actually, crazy. you were, Yeah, and you were our first guest. So, you know, you're an incredible sport. Mm-hmm. And there's no, obviously, no pun intended. Um, <laughs> but, um, no, it's really nice to have you back. Uh, Thank you. And I guess um, for those listeners out there, if, um, if you want to kind of um, learn about Sally's career highlights and um, the first episode, we kind of go through that. Um, but I think that for, t- for today's episode, it's really, you know, what are you up to now? Um, and, you know, and, and anything you can share as far as, you know, what brought you to where you are now and any message that you want to kind of get out there in the world. Um, is it, did you want to add to that, Xander? Yeah, I think maybe just a little elevator pitch, a little, just a quick, who, who, who's Sally? Um, yeah, and what are you doing now? Yeah, so um, I'm sort of better known when you walk down the streets at being that sort of, Olympic, World, European and Commonwealth Mm. champion and uh, it's crazy really how many people still say I remember that night and where I was uh, which is madness after all these years Um, but you know been retired quite a few years now and um, very much been around the corporate um, sort of speaking environment Uh, but a lot of that since sort of COVID has gone much more around health and, and well-being, which is something right. that I'm, I'm very passionate about. So what are the big projects you're working on now? Well, I think it's one of those things that you, um, you know, you have to keep reinventing yourself yeah. almost, you know, and I, and I really believe that you become stale in what you do. And I think, um, you know, to me, it's all about having passion, having energy, um, and having happiness in your Mm. life. And I think so often, you know, if we are doing the same thing, the same routine, going to the same place, eating the same food, doing the same exercise, you know, you you are going to lose that Mm -hmm. sort of real buzz from it. So I think that's something that I've sort of reflected from, you know, from the day you you retire because it's quite a scary day yeah. almost. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I sort of went out and did, and I still do now, you know, what I would have done in my athletics days of, of having a vision, knowing what I want to achieve. You know, mm. it doesn't have to be massive like, you know, it was. Um, but I think it just, it just helps me to to have that sort of energy for life, to have a, you know, that feeling good when you get up in the morning and I know what I'm going to do. And, you know, not everything goes plain sailing. Um, You know, some of the bits I'm involved in, you know, there's always difficulties, there's always hiccups. um, But then that pushes me on almost. That's Mm. where I sort of learn from certain Mm. things. And and, and I always go back to, you know, every day that I was training, you know, I failed every single day Mm. because, Mm. um, you know, you were trying to get better at something. Mm. And I think I've really taken that on with me. And I think it's a a good sort of outlook to have because, you know, you do realise that lots of things, there's lots of challenges, but it's about grasping those uh, and helping you to, to move on and find what you really want to do. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, not getting stale with the things you do. And yeah, um, yeah. yeah all sorts. I resonate with that 
so much like i get bored so easily <laughs> yeah. Yeah. that's why i have so many different interests i've got music i've got football i've got like all these things um because i need something different every day i need to be doing something or else yeah i lose some motivation i know there's talk with does it even really like motivation do you motivate yourself to do mm. to get things done and i think um what you touched on which was uh, waking up in the morning and knowing what you're going to do um i think that was really interesting because a lot of people don't do that. They don't wake up and know what they're going to do. So um, do you have a little bit of advice? Like, do you plan that morning when you wake up um, and then you plan your day or do you do it the night before or do you plan your whole week? No, I usually do it a little bit the night before. Mm -hmm. So I'll look at that next day, um, mm -hmm. you know, and I will slot things in. So, you know, exercise is very important to me. You know, it's not about... Well, it is about the physical side, but it's much more about it gets me, I don't know, in a great mood in the morning. Mm. It makes me have much more of a positive outlook. So that is almost my priority. Um, yeah. So I always do that sort of seven o'clock in the morning. Okay. Um, and that sort of is the you know, first thing that goes in. And then, you know, because you know, each of my, of my days are very varied. And, and I guess that's sometimes different to other people. But And I love it like that. Mm -hmm. um, and that's good. But I have to have make sure I have that structure. So mm -hmm. I am a bit of a bit of a list person so I will put down lots of different you know just phone calls that I've got to do mm -hmm. or clean one of the boys bedrooms yeah. or you know what I mean it's some of this Still really going. mundane Still <laughs> but it's it's on my list and um yeah. I just I just feel good when I've started to work through it yeah um, and I get a sense of achievement, achievement. from it um, and, you know, and, and I think because, you know, working wise, there's so much going on, you know, we're just building a, a new workshop around life skills and oh, cool. it sort of comes off the back of um, my speaking engagements because you often go into a a company, an organisation, you, you speak to amazing people with all talks of life and you inspire them for an hour. Mm -hmm, yeah. um, and they all come out buzzing <laughs> and like, and then, yeah. yeah. And, you know, and so often people do lose that confidence in moving that next step forward. And and I sort of feel sometimes even just after that hour, people are like, God, you've made me think I'm going to go for it because, mm. you know, it doesn't matter. I can always you know, turn left at some point if I need to or whatever, but mm. I've just got to get out. So the workshop it, it is very much a sort of like a 12-week life skills workshop, cool. but includes um, exercise programs, personal exercise programs, okay. personal nutritional programs, as well as sort of life skills around, you know, working out what your vision is, mm. um, how you get over, you know, those disappointments, how you get over those sort of barriers. Looking at... Um, you know, as I guess, as you you get into your your fifties, you you, you mm. sort of that sort of health piece becomes much yeah. more prevalent because you you're like, well, how how long have I got left in this world? <laughs> and, you know, have I done what I need to do? So, mm. Um, mm. there's quite a lot in there about yeah about healthy aging, longevity, because we we all want to be as fit and active yeah. as mm -hmm. we can uh, and to have a good experience of, you know, of growing old. So it's mm. like, what do we need to put in place? Mm. How our hormones affect us? That's a whole new area. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah. Um, not just women, Definitely. but men as well. And so there's the all sorts of bits like that in there as well. So mm -hmm. after the 12 weeks, you sort of feel like you've, you know, taken people on a, a real change and looked at how you break habits. And all of those sorts of things, because, you know, it's all a psychological mm -hmm. thing. And, and having at the end of it, you feel like you're, you know, you've, you've gone through something and you've got that vision and you know where you're going. Because lots of people yeah. feel lost in their lives. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. They That's haven't nice. got that direction. Yeah, yeah I, like, really nice. I like the kind of holistic approach to the 12 week program as well. It's not just business and it's not just health. Um, it's, you know, you've got worked in yeah. nu nutrition in there as well. Yeah. Um, and I think um, so just I remember. You know, when we had uh, interviewed you, you know, back when we first launched uh, Rocket Pod, um, you talked about um, that mental resilience piece. Mm. Um, but that's kind of built. Over, you've got to put the work in. 
um, you know, it doesn't just happen. And I think yeah. um, I think there's something else that uh, you talked about. You talked about how it was, you know, 80% mental and 20% physical at the yeah. time when it yeah. comes to winning your goals, yeah. um, which is incredibly interesting. And, you know, and then you had that preparedness piece. It's almost like you can't always anticipate what's going to go wrong. Um, but actually, as you do the thing, and you you fail. I love the idea that you actually celebrate yes. failure because if you're not yeah. failing, you're not trying. No. Um, and I think anything worth doing, t- well, it takes intention. And a lot of people are scared mm. to take that first step to maybe improve their lives in whatever, you know, whether it's fitness or whether it's business or whatever it is. Um, a lot of folks kind of are staying in the rut. They're doing the same thing. They're expecting different results, but it never happens. Um, but I think it's quite um a nice message that yeah. you know you actually have to do things and sometimes if you do immerse yourself into mm. you know one of your programs or you know it, it doesn't have to be your program but something that you can learn new things be surrounded by you know like-minded people that might yeah. be in a different in a, in a similar kind of headspace um and th- that sense of community and that support um yeah. i don't know whether you can comment yeah. on that but um i think just... it's just interesting how you can just get in a real downward spiral almost if mm. you are you know, you haven't got that mindset or you're not in a great place. Um, And that's often that, you know, things are out of your control. Um, But I think the thing that I learned with with my athletics days is that so much of it is is the mental side of it. And um, yeah, I mean, I used to say about 70 percent, but even now how it's how it's helped me, you know, if I've got a new project or if I'm trying to deliver a new talk or I'm meeting somebody for the first time you know that learning those skills around you know the power of the mind and that visualization and putting yourself in in another person Mm. and what uh, Mm -hmm. you know and watching yourself from the outside feeling it from the inside and and learning those actual skills it's not just something you can just rock up and do Mm -hmm. you've got to Mm -hmm. learn those sort of skills and what that takes and and it has it's just helped me so many times and especially Especially if, you know, you you get rejection and, you know, you might have days when you feel very anxious and you've been on social media too long. And, you know, know, I do all those sorts of things. Human, right? (laughs) Exactly. And you come off the other side and you go, oh, I don't feel very good about myself. (laughs) Um, And then, you know, it's about what do you then look in place? And that is often for me now, it's it has to be that holistic side. And yes, a lot of it is the mind. But. You know, this morning we had a late night last night, but you know, the best thing I had to do was just to get up and go for a walk with the dog. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? It's it's bringing out, it's mm-hmm. it's recognizing mm-hmm. those other pieces mm-hmm. that can help you so much, and and have good positive people around you when when you can. And sometimes you, you know, choose your friends almost, yeah, and yeah. or if you if you're not in control of that, you maybe have to work with somebody. Is is what you can put in place, or what? Mm-hmm. When do you remove yourself? Yeah. So there's so much to it. Um, mm-hmm. But I do feel that I've. Yeah, I've learned a lot on the way, Mm -hmm. Um, still learning, and um, I'm excited. I'm excited for the next 20 years, you know. Mm, I've got no insight in ever wanting to stop what I do. I, I love what I do, and I think... You know, I'm in that position where you can share your stories and help and support people, and I think that is what, you know, we are going to be needing in the next mm. 10, 20 yeah, years is, is that support and help and mm-hmm, share things. Mm-hmm. And we're all so much more open than we used to do, which is brilliant, but we just need to be building on it as well. Yeah, it's really nice. It's it's The whole holistic side of things is really nice because there's a lot of different career pathways after being an athlete, right? There's so yeah. many different things you can do. And um, in a way, you're kind of embodying this coach type of uh, personality where a lot of athletes after you retire you a lot of them turn into coaches and then you coach the next yeah. generation but I like how you've you know you're not really even restricted to just runners for example like now you're just helping everyone yeah. which is super nice yeah. what, what's the workshop called um so it's just going to be Sally Gunnell's life skills oh, okay. and um and, and I think with it is that you know, it's my husband coaches, he's got the athletes and it's great to be still involved at, you know, four athletes trying to get to the Paris Olympics oh, next wow. year. Wow. And I love that side of it. But, um, you know, I do help 
yeah, enjoy it in helping people. But also I've built an amazing team of, mm. um, you know, around me of specialists. Right. And mm. that is what I would have done in my day to, mm -hmm. to get, you know, it's only so far you can go on your own knowledge mm -hmm. um, and your own support. And it's about, you know, finding out with the courses about who is in your team and mm. building mm. that team. And often now, you know, it can be anybody from a really good friend that says the right things to mother-in-law that does me ironing or <laughs> <laughs> you know somebody who picks the kids up but um you know we've got a whole team of, of specialists around us of yeah. you know nutritionalists and skin um aging sort of as therapists and um just about injuries and because there's always somebody's got i got a niggle here or whatever but posture and things like that mm -hmm. and then the sort of psychotherapists and that sort of thing. so i've built this this sort of mm. amazing team people i've worked with in the past um going back quite a few years and some new people that i've come across in the last few years so you know still inspire yeah. me and yeah. i love their work and um Great. You know, and I'm just excited that they've come on board. So mm -hmm. it's great. It's amazing. Yeah, I'm interested. So you're obviously you've um, you've turned athlete to coach, um, but you obviously had a lot of coaching throughout your career. Um, I don't mm. know whether there was any standout moments from coaches, um, but obviously you've you've obviously taken that as Sandra touched upon, and you kind of brought it into your work now, into your workshops. Um, that coaching piece is kind of an interesting. Um, you know, it doesn't matter who you are, we can all benefit from somebody that you might just look at things a bit different. Um, can you comment a bit yeah. about that, about the importance I of mean, a coach <coughs> um, and just okay. some of your, you know, experiences, um, you know, being coached, um, you know, as an athlete and even now, do you know, do you do you uh, work with coaches even now with your you know, professional commercial? Yeah, focus? Um, coaching is a is a great skill. I really somebody I, you know, admire, I admire my husband. Um, the patience he has, yeah. it's, that's the number one thing that <laughs> I love. Um, but a good coach to me is, is, a, is a good listener. Mm -hmm. Somebody that treats everybody as an individual. Mm -hmm. I think that's really key. You know, everyone in my training group, we had different training programs and working on our strengths and our weaknesses. And I like that. Um, Somebody who's always bringing new ideas, new skills in, because I think there is an element of doing the same training day mm -hmm. in and day out. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, they they always say, isn't it, that our sort of minds have about 46 hours that we get excited about something and then it okay. goes off. Yeah, interesting. interesting. I didn't know that. So if you were to go on holiday, the first 46 hours yeah. is the best. Yeah, I've heard about that. <laughs> and then you <laughs> just sort of... 46, that's been 46. Yeah, 46. Yeah. I don't know why 46. And then <laughs> yeah. it sort of just tapes off. And it's the same, you know, if you are eating the same food, you know, mm. you, you just lose that enjoyment. So I think with a coach, they bring that... Um, you know, that variety in, that enjoyment in and mixing it up. And I think that's what I respect of a coach and not always do. I mean, you have to sometimes do the good old basic skills, you yeah. know, those hurdles, drills or whatever. Mm. And you can never shy away from that. Mm. But it's about bringing other areas in uh, mm -hmm. and helping. And, and, you know, that is coaching in life as well, yeah. isn't it? I think sometimes we forget to be coached and supported mm. and... Um, yeah, and that sometimes we're coaching somebody else and we don't actually know we're doing it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think that's, that's a, you know, that's sort of an important part that we have to take on. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so something that you've been doing throughout your career and something that you're, I'm sure your workshop is helping a lot of other people do is this, this idea of embodying um, the person you want to be before you're, you are that person and you touched it on mm. just now. Um, that's a hot topic nowadays yes. <laughs> it um, is yeah and it is um i mean it is isn't it you you have this vision you know we work out what it is you know where you guys want to go with your company or mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know where you want to be in five years with work or whatever else but the the piece is always what what goes in between yeah. what does that <laughs> yeah. look like yeah. <laughs> um and you know and i think that is always the piece that that was so key with as an athlete and, and so key in my life now because it's like I always just describe it as like this little stepping stones mm. and you have to have those visions and you might go one step forward and you might go two steps back. Um, but it's important to have, you know, and I always remember my um, 
physiologist or a psychologist always saying to me, it's it's clarity in your vision. So you've got mm. to have clarity in that pathway mm -hmm. to what it is that you're trying to achieve. And it might be, you know, you're trying to run a 5K park run, <laughs> you know, and which is brilliant. Yeah. And, you know, and I love it. And you've given yourself 12 weeks and you've got yourself a training program. You've got yourself, a, you know, a <laughs> training buddy, a new pair of shoes. So you've thought about what it is that's going to go in place. And you might be looking at your nutrition because... Yeah you know that's going to help because I might lose a bit of weight before I mm -hmm. get there. So it's the same in 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 whatever it is you're trying to think about. It's it's important to write, go, okay, what is it actually going to take to get there? Yeah, and, yeah. Um, you know, with the workshops now, that's what I'm doing is what is it actually going to take? Yeah. And our first mm -hmm. one's in February. So it's we're putting those little pieces in mm -hmm. place and doing that visualisation. So it's... Yeah. Uh, yeah, That's and great. and it's about spending that time with that visualization. That you know, it doesn't have to be massive amount of time, but it's giving yourself five minutes of yeah. sitting on a sofa, having a cup of coffee, going for that walk this morning, and allowing yourself to right. take yourself off. Mm. Um, and I think something that sports always taught me is, uh, you know, not to reflect too much on the past. Mm. Mm. Um, and mm. I think sometimes it's very easy to always reflect too much on the past. And mm -hmm. um, I want the course to be very much, and, and my life is very much is right. Well, that's done. Yeah. Um, what does you? Yeah, how do we move forward? And yeah. what does moving forward mm -hmm. look like? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Something that keeps coming up um, is. You know, it's all very well knowing what you want, but sometimes you have to sit. I mean, you've touched on it. Sit with yourself um, yeah. to actually become self-aware to actually know what you want. Because yeah. I think there's a lot of people that are they're in their heads. Can't um, even sit with themselves. They're in this whole groundhog yeah. day. They 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 think they know what they want, but actually they haven't invested in themselves for that that quietness. And whether it's walking the dogs or whether it's yeah. meditating or whether it's just. Mm having some time out to actually mm. think, actually, what do I want? What am I feeling? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I often some, find yeah. that it's um, a quite a good way of doing it is is actually to look at what three things do you don't like. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I often start okay. with yeah. mm. um, the other end because it's hard sometimes to get to that vision. Mm -hmm. Right, and you're not ready. You're not, yeah, you're not ready it's yet. like, well, right. I don't really know what it is. I don't yeah. know what I want to do. I'm lost. Mm -hmm. So I often start with, you know, the other end of what do I really not like about myself yeah. or my oh, yeah. life or mm -hmm. what I'm doing. And it doesn't have to be massive, but it might be, I don't know, you don't like commuting or yeah. mm -hmm. you don't like, I don't know, the creative job you're in or whatever it could, it might be, or you don't like, um, mm -hmm. you know, how you feel about yourself or yeah. your house or what you look like or whatever it may be. So I think if you start by the end bit of the three things that you don't like, mm. then it just gives you a bit of a thing like, okay, well, how can I actually change these? Right. Yep. Yep. Um, because it's not always about job wise or career. It's actually sometimes just a you know, just where you want to be next month. And, mm -hmm. you know, I don't yeah. like these three things about myself. And, and then it just helps, then goes, well, what would I have to change to um, to move forward a bit? And then you sort of work in your head and you want, well, okay, I don't really want to commute. I want a job that I can, I don't know, ride mm -hmm. my bike to. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, mm -hmm. so I've got to look for a job that's in maybe the next within eight miles, five miles or whatever it may be. So it just starts to then open up, mm -hmm. um, you know, that vision and allows you to then start to to grow with it. So I think that's always a good way of starting. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, <laughs> so, that's just such a good point. No, it really <laughs> is because um, I think uh, a lot of the time when people don't know what they want to do, they it's like you you walk in, and you don't even know where you want to go. Stuck. Whereas usually, like most of the time, you don't realize actually you are holding stuff. You're carrying all these yeah. things that are holding you yeah. back. Yep. Yep. And yeah. so actually the best thing to do first, if you don't know what to do, is probably to yeah. just start offloading some of those stuff. Exactly. And it could just be, I don't know, certain friends, friendships. Yeah, yeah they're, they're just taking people. away oh, from good. you. Yeah, or, or whatever, yeah. you know, a bit toxic or where you sit true. in an office. Or, I think you, you know just read I my mean. mind. Because I was yeah. thinking, I think you, yeah, it's just being aware though, isn't it? It's it actually, is being aware. If, you, if you spend the time to focus on what you don't like, which yeah. most people don't yeah. even yeah. give the, themselves time to do that, mm -hmm. sit with it, mm -hmm. feel, feel the feeling. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then, yes. Yeah. yeah. So, so cut away the, the stuff you don't like. Or or actually, that's, you, and then it just helps you 
figure out what you need to do. Yeah. It then turns into actions, doesn't it? Okay, yeah. I need to cut away the commute or the, yeah. or I need to make a change yeah. or yeah. I need exactly. to, you know, leave this relationship or I need to spend less time with this person. Yeah. Um, and I think often it's good to make those decisions on, you know, after or question yourself after you've had a good night's sleep because, you yeah, know, you make true, the yeah. wrong decisions mm -hmm. or you... You know, or you think of things too deeply. If you, if you've only right. had four or five hours sleep, it's not good enough. You know, mm. sleep is just Important. it's massive, but it's very hard to get sometimes. Yep, and yep, it's, yep. you know, we're all been there, haven't we? I still sometimes now wake up at three o'clock in the morning. Mm. Uh, sometimes because I've gone to bed too early. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, That's my biggest good. swing at the problem. <laughs> That's the moment. a good problem to have. <laughs> I know, but then I'm like three o'clock going. Oh, I don't, don't want to get up now. Anyway, so. Um, but that then goes, you know, if I eat too late at night, so if right. I'm waiting for yeah. my eldest son to come in because he's been working in the gym because he's a personal trainer, oh, so he doesn't get in to eight, so you're like, we've all eaten, it's just too late then. Mm. So, you know, little things like that, it's like, right, okay, I've got to put something on earlier that he can come in, I can eat at six o'clock. Uh, what a good mum. <laughs> well, there is, there's all boy. these, sort of, I think there's lots of things that you can all, you can look at that then helps and supports that decision and I I know I just know that um you know to keep myself in a good positive place um yeah. and to be able to I don't know keep your memory as it as you go <laughs> as you get older and mm. um you know lots of those other outer bits just play a really important mm -hmm. part of it mm. I think actually um sometimes we don't feel like doing anything and I think that's okay sometimes. yeah and you know, everyone goes through t difficult, tough times. Um, and it's almost like, you know, I just what something I thought of is just sit with it, feel the pain or feel the sadness or feel the your blue. Yeah. Um, and that's OK. And it will pass. Um, yeah. And um, I think we all a lot of people, a lot of us kind of beat ourselves up for feeling yeah. a certain way or um, you can't if you're feeling that way then, okay, yeah. you can take action and you can change it. But sometimes you just need to do nothing. Yeah, exactly. And if you want to go fast, sometimes you need to slow down and do, do nothing. To go, yeah. to go fast, you're going to go slow. And yeah. I think yeah, 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 we yeah. talked about that the other day, didn't yeah. we? Yeah. And I think one of the biggest traits of being a sports person is that you're a fixer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's something that I've had to really change and um, and listen to because, mm. I, you know, if I'm talking to somebody who's got a problem, I'll try and fix it. Mm -hmm. And you can't, you can't always fix the problem. Nope. And um, so I've really, had to in the last 10 years of really give yourself the time that you're talking about and yeah, um, yeah. step away from it don't make decisions Have straight away right. mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. give yourself now you know a couple of days I don't go back on an email as quick sometimes as I would because yeah. I might be a bit angry or whatever yep. I'll give myself a couple of days um, and I think the other thing that I've really had to do and I have struggled with is is that whole piece about rest time mm. and stopping mm. because, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, sport doesn't allow you to do that yep. almost. Well, it does in yep. that you've got to recover and you and but it was forced. But, you know, the day you retire, it's like, God, I've got all this time now. Well, what what now? can I do? <laughs> so I've had to, yeah. yeah, purposely go, right, I'm doing nothing today. Mm -hmm. um, and I actually get enjoyment of having a day when there's nothing in the diary mm -hmm. i don't know mm -hmm. if that's an age thing yeah. but i think it's good and i think it's something that we should do at, at you know all yeah. stages almost of actually say right i'm going to do nothing on this sunday mm -hmm. and i'm going to have anything in there and just have that reflective day and, and yeah, you come me back time, stronger afterwards. me time day yeah, yeah exactly something i wanted to touch on as well was that um i realized that uh, most of the time people spend it, their days or their time thinking about the things that they don't like yeah and it's so subconscious that we don't realize it but actually we think more about the things we don't like the things that we don't want the things that are in our life that we don't want to be in our life yeah. anymore um and we spend less time thinking about what we do want and so trying to shift that drastically from the other mm -hmm. side to the other it's just um it's, it's yeah. so much work so i think um i think the other thing that's has been key as well that I've also I had to sort of bring into my life is like is actually celebrating things that are good mm. <laughs> and recognizing things mm. that you are because sport just you're just on this conveyor belt aren't you mm -hmm. and you're right mm. you, you win an Olympic gold medal you're like right next well that's one. fine what's next because yeah. you're, so, right. you're so scared of failure mm -hmm. you're so scared mm. of not being that athlete you're so scared of what people are going to say mm -hmm. yeah 
Um, mm. And I think sometimes it is about celebrating and recognizing those little wins. And I think that was probably one of my regrets that I never, mm -hmm. ever really celebrated any of that. Um, but yeah. you're doing it now. I'm doing it now. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I do it every day sometimes. And it might be <laughs> that I go for, a, you know, a little 5K run and I'll have a, a yeah. cake at the end of it, which yeah. is probably not the best thing. But you know, sometimes it is just going, yeah, you know, yeah. That's, that's a good project I've done there. Mm. Or, you know, I have been out for a bit of exercise today. Mm. And, you know, I think it's just recognizing those little bits mm -hmm. and not always thinking of living in that past. Yeah. I haven't got anything. I can't do this. You yeah. Know? But it's like, well, that's that's a little tick here. And, and yeah. giving yourself that little tick almost. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. I think, yeah, celebrating wins. That is... um. Thing. Yeah, athletes. I think we're um, not good, are we? I mean, no, maybe that's great. what drives you on, isn't it? I maybe that's it where you go to that higher level it and is, you need yeah. it. But sometimes I don't think it's always healthy. Yeah, in, in terms of yeah, peace within you. Yeah. Is, um, yeah. Um, yeah. Go ahead. No, no. Yeah, well, I was, I was just thinking um, that those incremental things, those little things that can be celebrated too, because I think a lot yeah. in society now, especially with young people. Um, you know, you know, comparison is a thief of joy. You know, they're comparing themselves with someone that might be, a, a, you know, we talked about, you know, in a matter of, you know, they might be a thousand steps ahead of them. Yeah. Um, and so they can't, you know, and they feel bad. But actually, if they can start feeling good about the little progress, the little things um, that they do, um, mm. then they build and they compound. Yeah, and exactly. the more, you know, and it might be the silly little thing, you know, do you go for the Snickers bar yeah. or the banana? You know, it's the little yeah. tiny, the, the things that are easy to do, but also easy not to do. Yeah. But actually, that's that's good. Yeah. The fact that you actually wake up in the morning, the fact that you can go for the, a dog walk. The fact, the fact and, you and, can, and I think the thing that you know, I always learn is that, um, you know, you don't get much praise out there. You don't get confidence from other people very yeah. often. Mm -hmm. Confidence has to come from you. From within. From right. within. Yeah. You know, that and if you're work. just waiting for it to happen around you and somebody, it's not going to happen. Mm -mm. It has to come from within you and yep. for you to say, well, that's a pretty pleased with that bit of work or mm. quite pleased with that, you know, weight session in the gym or mm -hmm. the run yeah. or whatever. And you, you have to purposely get into that routine of finding it, you know, on, yeah, and on yeah. those scary days of, you know, of racing. You know, that mind was all over the place. Like, mm -hmm. oh, God, I'm a bit tired today. Mm -hmm. I didn't really, right, you know, sleep yeah. very well Maybe last I've got night. The flu. <laughs> oh, exactly. My tummy Chatting hurts. To <laughs> Whatever else. Rather than go, okay, so I have actually trained really well for the last three years. Yeah. Right. You know, and, um, yes. you know, I've got no sort of niggles. I haven't missed any training mm. and I've eaten quite well. So you have to consciously find that and I think it, it that's a really good routine and, and almost to get into one of your bits on your list of your day yeah. or you know I sometimes do it at the end of the day yeah. you know people often say this isn't it to do write down three things of mm -hmm. what you have actually achieved mm -hmm. in that day and I think it's a really good thing to do yeah. because it often it you know and I do struggle sometimes going, what is it but makes you think about what I actually have done in that day. Yeah. Do you do it do you do it every day or do you do it every when you can? Um I do. I put a book next to my bed okay. and I will get into bed <laughs> and most nights depending on yeah. how tired yeah. I am yeah. um I will write down three things that mm -hmm. I've done in that day and okay. pathetic silly things like I don't know, cooked a nice meal for my family. Yeah, but that's, <laughs> that's, that's a win. Um, you yeah, know, it nice. is. It's finding those wins. Mm. Yeah. And, and you're and you all of a sudden it makes you realise that, okay, I have done, you know, some and, good and, and, and I yeah. feel good and that about yourself. So yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's funny, my, my wife's American and I've got three teenage daughters. Um they're obviously they're dual dual national. Um and today's Thanksgiving. Oh, uh, yeah. So we're going to have a turkey. Although actually, the one we bought uh, came, it, it showed up frozen. Oh so no! So we can't do that <laughs> no. one. So I, I wonder. Anyway, so but no, it's just um, being Little thankful. Um, yeah. But I think recognizing what what we've achieved is good. I I think riding is. I mean, I'd I'd like to incorporate that habit into my day. Um, yeah. I don't do it enough actually. Just, just no, because lots of people do journalism, journaling, don't they? Where they write down lots of things. I'm not, I'm not that type of person. Yeah. Mm. And I'll put my hands up and say, and I really know it works for quite a lot of people that I, I have around me. Um, but for me, just writing three things down is yeah, takes me, you know, a couple of minutes. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't five take long. minutes to think. It doesn't take long, yeah. and it's something I know I can. 
I can stick with. Because often also we do back. things and we can't, we never, you know, right. it's too big and it's not something that we can, yeah. you know, keep up with. So I think it's about, you know, again, those little small yeah. wins. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I think when you are having a bit of a tougher day, you know, you it's quite nice actually if you have that record, you can look back and say, well, actually, actually, you know, my life is good and yeah. or whatever. I mean, yeah. I'm just... Um, Even it, if you never look back, you, you've written it, and you know, <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's, it's gone in there. In there. Right. It's in yeah. there, yeah, exactly. There. Yeah, that's true. That's yeah. true. You've done it. <laughs> um, yeah, that's so funny. Yeah, um, I think uh, we're starting to touch on on a new topic. Um, it's interesting to see how it's flowing. So we've gone from sort of visualizing and and <laughs> finding who you want to be um, first, but I think now we're getting into like um, it's pretty much as it's taking responsibility right and i think being an athlete actually that teaches you all you need to know about personal yeah. responsibility right if you yeah. if you don't put in the work yeah. no problem someone's gonna come in and take your place like and mm. then it's it's on it's on you right and so i think um even what you're doing with your workshops right it's sort of like this process of um first reflect on on yourself you have yeah. to be able to yep look inwards because that's where all the change needs to come from um and then it's sort of okay where do i want to go visualizing that and making sure you know that you mm. you have the right routes to where you want to go but yeah. then from there it's the hard work every yeah, day yeah. right and so it's the consistency it within work. doing the you're right yeah. and i think you mentioned that a lot the 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 two words working hard hard yeah. work is um is actually quite a triggering word for yeah. a lot of young people nowadays yeah. especially or i think just anyone really because there's instant gratification yeah and we yeah. can get things like that now so like no one really wants to work hard for yeah. what they want it's about i think it's getting that right though you know i've got three boys 18 22 and 25 so they're okay. You know, they're that, that that group that are out there and they're working, but it's that, hang on a minute, this is hard work. Yeah. Hang on a minute. I to, yeah. But I think it's about training smart. That's smart. What, I was thinking smart. that. I was thinking yes. that. That yeah, is what, um, yeah. you know, athletics taught me is that you can't, you know, training, working hard, you've got to put time in, mm -hmm. but it's got to be quality. Mm. Yep. And, um, and training that's... smart was like, okay, I'm going to do you know, three hours pushing here, but then I'm going to take that break at 11 o'clock mm -hmm. and I'm going to mm -hmm. sit and have my coffee or I'm going to go for a walk mm -hmm. and recharge myself and then I'm going to go again, or, you know, or, yeah, you know, yeah. I might change it up and do something else. You can't just keep Work going hard. hard out, you know, <laughs> yeah. and, and burnout is a massive thing that we all talk about and right. it, it is such a thing and it's, you know, it's not good and it's going to get worse almost if we carry on um so i think it's about yeah for that younger generation is about training smart and i think they were and they will understand it and i think the thing that i've noticed with that generation is also that they you know they are quite healthy and mm -hmm. um you know they're very driven people um but you know, there it's a bit like well, they want it all and it want it yeah. all instantly, yeah. Yeah. right now, um, <laughs> yeah. and now, and yeah. exactly. Yeah. But it, and, but I think that's where it helps to have that sort of like, okay, where do you actually want to be in five years' time? Because yeah. you can't. Mm. You just can't be jump here. Well, you can't yeah. just yeah. give up. You know, I watch it with my boys and you go, well, hang on, I'm not there yet. Mm, mm, so mm. I'm going to try something else. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it's that yeah. piece that. um you know, that's where you're going to go, well, why hasn't it worked? Mm -hmm. What, you know, actually reflect back and, you know, and, and again, that's what you would have done with, with sports performance is like, well, that didn't work. Why didn't that work? And that was mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I was, I don't know, the, the left leg was in the wrong place or whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. else. And I think yeah. that's the same with something that's coming as a bit of a challenge. I think it's actually really good to look at that challenge and go, mm. well, why isn't it mm. working at the moment? Mm. What is it that's not clicking? And, you know, and sometimes it, you have to do a big left yeah. turn and hurdle with the other leg. Yeah. You know, we've had, yeah, <laughs> we've yeah. had days like that where, yeah, yeah, you well. know, you've had to do things like that and you think, God, I'm never going to be able to do that. But mm. it's incredible that you then get that discipline and go again. And, and that's what, you know that takes and mm. it, it is it's um these are all skills and and you know and i look at my boys now and, and you know and you do you, they have got 
lots to learn and I want them to almost fail at the moment, which right. is really quite sad, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. but, and I can see them, you know, they're coming up against their barriers mm -hmm. and, um, yeah. you know, questioning lots of things. Mm -hmm. The 18 years stood there yes, a couple of days ago, I spent my, mon <laughs> my month's money. All I do. <laughs> like, so, yep. Yeah, there you go. So there you go. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So, it's yeah, gonna, you know, it's um, I said to him, well, you're going to have to get another job on top of that one. Yeah, so, right, yeah. you know, it's just working those bits out. And I think mm -hmm. it's good for them. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's tough. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I think they are they do listen. I think it's great. They like advice. They take on board. Um, I think they're the yeah, you know, they're much health. And not just talking about my kids, but I think kids generally, they get the you know, not drinking quite so much culture mm -hmm. a bit and they do eat yeah. healthy and they, they yeah. understand that yeah. much more yeah. than we probably do later. Yeah. In life. So the awareness piece of like, yeah. of, of these things and how it affects, mm -hmm. you know, such as drinking or whatever, yeah. how they affect not even just yourself, but no. how it affects everyone. Um, much more, but then, touch. yeah, when it comes to like, okay, l let's talk about what you want, then yeah. oh, yeah, I want this and I want it right now, yeah, <laughs> and I don't want to work for it, yeah. <laughs> I just want it. Exactly, yeah. it's just very interesting. How, yeah, how everything... yeah. So we earlier we talked about, um, I thought we touched on it just now, but, um, yeah, there is a there is a, 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 a shift in the world. Um, I think there's more, I think people are becoming more individualistic. Um, you know, they're realizing their own power, which is a really positive thing. Um, yeah. I think. The, you know, the dark side is that, you know, the rise of narcissism and, right. you know, the whole social media thing. But I think there's, the, you know, there's actually more pros than cons when it comes to technology and social and the rest of it. It's just knowing how to harness these tools. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and and it, and it is okay to fail. And I think, yeah, um, exactly. you know, and, and sometimes, I mean, I've got, as I mentioned, three, my, my teenagers are six, 16, seven, well, in fact, my 17 year old's turning 18 next week. Um, and my 19 year old's turning 20 um, in January. So, <laughs> You know, just seeing them go through their different struggles, yeah. and um, but uh, but actually, yeah, yeah failure is actually a good thing. Um, yeah. But I think with this, it's, it's just knowing who who you are, and and that, that we are powerful. Mm. Um, you know, and I've got three, you know, girl amazing humans, um, and I think it's a great opportunity for them actually, yeah. because they're very powerful. Mm. Um, and, and I think it goes yeah. back to. Um, you know, always having people you look up to and role models. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. you know, I always did in, in sport, always all the way through. And, um, you know, how important they are. Somebody that, you know, I work with, you know, have mentors that in organisations that I work with. And, you know, and I think that's that's what, you know, because I, I do come up against people always asking me about, you know, the success of women in sport and, and still the struggles and, closing the gap uh, mm -hmm. and that side of it and it, so it's a it's a real big topic and I always say it's been incredible how you know how how far we've come but we've still got a long, a long way to go, way yeah. to mm -hmm. go. Mm -hmm. um, and you know they're talking about well the women's England football players get the same pay as the men mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's a long way off isn't yeah. it but mm -hmm. you know if they are closing their ground and the recognition is incredible but we just have to keep pushing um, and I often sort of think you know I'd, I'd hate to be you know at the top of my game now because of all the social media mm -hmm. um, that, that adds a whole Spotlight. another yeah. dimension yeah. onto it mm -hmm. and um, but I think also it, it's it is good in that it's allowing, especially within sport, girls to realise what they can actually achieve. Yes, yes. And, you know, maybe not all women's sport is on television. It's definitely better how it, that it used to mm. be. Um, you know, are we still getting the coverage in papers and magazines? Has it moved away from, um, you know, you've only the good looking ones that are on the covers <laughs> and, you know, that side of it. But that's where social media can be a good thing because you can follow, you know, some of the athletes are incredible. The stories that right. they put on and very inspiring right. and and allowing the, the girls to think, yeah, I can do this. And, you mm. know, and I'm going to go mm -hmm. on this journey as well. And, you know, to have at the Olympics three years ago, um, more women were in the Great Britain team than there were men, which is incredible. Oh, okay, I didn't realize um, that. Yeah, and yeah. more medals were won by women as well. Okay, so. fantastic. It's amazing. I mean, just to highlight this, you know, not on the sports side of things, but I think um, um, one pound of every hundred um, of VC money goes to female founders, and I think 10% go to mixed gender startups. So even on the business world, and, th and that is, 
I think that is changing. But again, I think it just highlights the fact that yeah. um, how far well, we got why to <laughs> why <laughs> I mean that you know, and there's there's a big debate around it. Um, yeah. I think if you compared the percentage of, of female business owners, I think it's a much higher percentage um, of directors of, of companies. But I'm, you know, but as far as the startup scene, um, there's definitely mm. yes, one percent of VC yeah. funds, which is and um, a lot of the work that I do in the corporate world. It's, um, you know, they they, you know, but the message that comes out is like, we've got so many incredible women, mm -hmm. but they haven't got that confidence. They've come back from having kids, mm -hmm. um, you know, they've come back. They could move so much further up in an organization. They've got all the skills, but they just lack that confidence. Mm -hmm. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, can you go in and address this sort of area? So I think it's confidence is everything at every level, isn't mm -hmm. it? You know, whether yeah. you're talking about sport or, yeah. you know, just general at whatever level, but even at that top end of that, you know, CEOs, chief execs, whatever mm. else, it's, having that you know we can do it we can mm. balance work house you know we might not do it brilliantly every single day mm -hmm. um but it is possible to do and mm -hmm. it's then having organizations that allow you and support you and mm -hmm. allow you to go off and sports days and mm -hmm. whatever else and yeah. you know nativity plays and, and and allowing that culture from within it and that still needs to change as well yeah. mm -hmm. i think motherhood as well i mean that's inc i mean yeah i mean i've got a lot of respect for my wife raising you know mm -hmm. three daughters um just incredible amount of work um i'm pretty hands-on dad but even so it still does fall on the on the mum um, but those yeah. skills can be applied in business um and oh, yeah. you know, these are i met a um an entrepreneur last week kendall um single mum five children um wow. has built an ai company to you know million plus revenue a superwoman brilliant yeah. amazing and she's got three dogs too i mean how on the earth did <laughs> wow. she do? i don't know um, that's great but uh, we'd like to have her on here actually. yeah, yeah. You should but anyway do. it's almost like yeah it's um but it, on the the positive side the world there is a shift people are becoming mm -hmm. aware mm -hmm. Um, and you know, well, it doesn't yeah. matter who you are, but you know, it's just knowing your power, isn't it? Yeah. You know, and it's like I like to, because I, when it comes to my daughters, I like to talk them. But they, you know, raising independent humans, it doesn't yeah. matter whether they're female, but the, you know, but actually, you know, the world needs to catch up, doesn't it? Um, yeah. Yeah, it is, and it's yeah, it's moving so. in that direction, which is great. I mean, is there sort of little segments of like equality in in that um, that you'd like to touch on that? maybe it's a little bit easier for people to start exploring, to change the way that they think or work about things. Um, I think a lot of it goes back to, um, yeah, I mean, you know, if I, if I look back to when I was, you know, performing, I was probably the only woman that was on the whole circuit from Great Britain with the, you know, the Linford Christie's and the <laughs> Colin Jackson's and these sort of guys. Mm. And, my feeling behind it, and, and it was what did drive me, is that I knew I had to go that next level. Mm. I knew that just being an Olympic champion wasn't going to do it. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> Which is crazy. It is absolutely insane, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, but that, I almost, <laughs> like... it, it drove me. It's what... Mm. Made me train mm -hmm. better. The um, fire in your belly. Yeah, yeah, yeah it yeah. did. It gave me that fire in the belly to go, well, I can... I can do this mm -hmm. and I'll go to that next level. It wasn't a case of, well, I'm never going to achieve that. So I'm going to, you know, and, and shout about it all the time. Mm. It was about, right, what is it going to take to prove that I am yeah. as good as these guys and that mm -hmm. I deserve the same? And, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, it took a world record and uh, yeah. a world champs almost to do that. And you go, oh, people go, oh, you are quite good, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll well, we might you, yeah. put you on yeah. the front of this magazine or, Maybe. you know. Maybe, we'll think about it. <laughs> exactly. So yeah. I would just say to people, you know, don't look at it as a – a barrier look at mm. it as uh, as an opportunity to yeah. you know to to see what you what you can break down and where you can go with it and defy mm. people and yes yeah give yourself that fire that you need to mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. definitely yeah because you can channel those emotions can't you i mean anything i mean your emotions are there to do stuff um, yeah so it's like how you harness it because you can either become i guess the victim um when you're faced with a challenge or it's um or you turn it around and you use it for strength. Is that book? I think it's called The Obstacle is the Way. It's a silly yes. little book. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's, uh, again, it's like when there's a, a big mountain of a challenge, it's like, well, how can you use that for strength? 
Um, but that's a good message, isn't it? It's yeah, like, exactly. get, get angry about it. Get that fire in your, you know, to I, kind of, yeah, you know, yeah, force yeah. change. Um, yeah. so that, maybe, you know, and watch yeah. the movie, I think it was last night or two nights ago. Uh, I'm not going to say what it was, but um, <laughs> they were, something was going on. Someone's trying to reach their full potential or whatever. And then the, their friend said, like, I believe um, like your full potential, like your full power lies somewhere between anger, full anger and complete serenity. Oh, okay. Whoa. Interesting. Like right, okay. right there in the middle. And I think like it was really, really interesting. I was like, oh, that is okay. very true. And I think as, um, yeah, as an athlete, that's really relatable. You do have that fire. You have that like, mm. I want to, but then also you need to be in the oh. zone and you yeah. talked about being in yeah. the zone um yeah. being in the zone in the flow that also lives in everything else um yeah creative musical um i think even building a business for example mm. you get into these little states where you can just i don't know what even is it like do you, yeah. do you have your <laughs> theories on what being well, in the zone is the there. flow so it only ever happened twice and it wasn't something that I could just do week mm. in, week out. Um, I think it's about, you know, we talked about that inner sort of power that you have as an athlete in that, you know, you you step up. It's your responsibility. Yep. Um, and I think what happens until you get to that state where you can do that, you, you put too much out for other people and it's mm. other people's mm. faults. So actually, it's it is your responsibility. You've got to step up. You've yeah, got own to own it exactly. Mm -hmm. So you have to own it first of all, and then it is about yeah the the time spent in that just that power of the visualization mm -hmm. and um, knowing exactly what you've got to execute, mm. and mm. yeah, and and going into the zone is that it just happens. So yeah. it just mm, yeah. you literally. I don't remember apart from <clears throat> sorry one line because I made a mistake in a world championships so um so that didn't you know settle too much in my mind yeah. we worked on at the same point throwing a positive in so it's really good to have good mantras mm. um mm -hmm. positive don't have to be big but just positive lines that you tell yourself so mm -hmm. my mm -hmm. positive line was uh, this is yours you've got it that's wow. it so as I soon as that, that came in nice. That was okay. the only piece that I remember nice. coming into my mind. <laughs> I love it. I don't. It's yeah. just a. Cr it's a crazy thing where you just. I got it. Yeah. You've done it. You've rehearsed it in your mind so many times. Yeah. And you just play it out to the point Switch. where you cross the line and you yeah. just. You don't know. You don't know yeah. whether that is real, whether it's yeah. not, yeah, whether yeah, it's yeah. like made up. It's like, am I going to wake up in a minute yeah. or what's going on? And I so, think even just that, just the line. <coughs> you've got it that all that implies you've already won yeah and you're already that person yep. you've you're already the winner yeah. so you've embodied it like and i think in, in, i think that's a really good thing for people to have little mantras in their life mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know and just when times are tough just you know just saying yeah. that yeah. one line and it could be you know you're the best mm -hmm. or <laughs> you know yeah yeah, yeah. So, enjoy life or... so mantras um preparation um i'm trying to yeah. it for for anybody Mantras, so obviously for you and well that visualization visualization piece, having clarity mm -hmm. in your vision so you know exactly mm -hmm. which is probably easier when you're on a sports field mm -hmm. in some respects but then i go you know it's um you know but i've heard football players i've heard lots of people say that they're delivering a speech and they don't almost remember the whole yeah. speech because they've rehearsed it in yeah. their mind mm -hmm. so many times. They okay. know. And, and, you know, as I was saying before, you want to feel it from within of how you're going to deliver it to being somebody watching it down right. there and watching that person move on the stage <laughs> or whatever it may be. Or mm -hmm. you know, you're going for a job interview. You know, it's yeah, such a yeah, great yeah. thing. Yeah. So you just get in there and you just reel it off, yeah. and it just happens. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's a, yeah, I, I'm very yeah. interested in that whole. I wish I could get there again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's very strange. Yeah. You sort of slip into it, um, and uh, your body just takes over, right? It's yeah. like your motor, and that's yeah. where your preparation comes. I in. think also it is, um, yeah, nerves, expectation, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all of that comes into it as well. Mm -hmm. 
So you've got to be quite like, yeah, mm-hmm. quite on edge yeah, almost yeah. in some respects, but not in a way that you're so stressed. It's more like, this is it. This is the big one. An- like, anxiety oh. and excitement are like the same reaction, the chemical reaction. Oh, really? okay. Um, okay. It's okay. the same thing. It's just your narrative, whether you put it on. Like, yeah. I'm anxiety or excitement. Or okay. I'm excited. You, just, like, you, choose. you can choose. Okay. Wow. It's the okay. same reaction going on. I like that. Yeah. That's yeah, pretty cool. That's I remember your, when we first talked to you, um, you had talked about um, rehearsing all the problems that could happen. If a hurdle fell over, you hit a hurdle. Yeah. If you fell over, mm. you would get up. Um, and I know that you can't, you were talking about, you couldn't, you can't predict everything that could go wrong, but you could probably over, by doing the thing, you know, you get c- conditioned to knowing it almost becomes automatic. If you fall over, you get up, mm-hmm. if you hit a hurdle, you get, you know, it's, um, and it's, um, you just build that resilience. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, yeah, I, I that, that really kind of, really... that was impactful when we, yeah. when we talked, for, you know, And first. I think it is a real part of that whole visualization of things because so often things will go wrong yeah, you know yeah. the bus turns up late mm. and you've got to yeah. warm up in yeah. less you know normally you have an hour but you've got 50 minutes or 40 minutes so lots of people will go well i can't warm up in 40 minutes yeah. so yeah. yeah but you but go you've got, you've got i know what i'm gonna do in 40 minutes mm. and i can warm up yep. so you don't panic you're not panicking about things mm-hmm. that are out of your control or mm whatever so it's yeah. just you know i think it's important as well to to <laughs> stress that it, when you reflect on your past mistakes it, it is a good thing to do but to not just reflect on the mistake and then that's it you have to think about what you could improve or like the solution to it because then that trains you for the future things that happen yeah. um okay something's not going right right now in this moment what can i do to solve Mm it um and it leaves you in a higher vibration than in a low if you just reflect thinking about all the stuff you did wrong and then leave it you're just leaving yourself in a really bad place exactly you have to like switch the attention to the good things um yeah i've got something to add to that so um i had the privilege of spending um those five mornings um consecutive days with eddie jones um okay over on two occasions and um there was a book I was reading at the time called Thinking in Bets, and I actually recommended it to Eddie because we were chatting in the in the sauna, and um, he actually had read it by the time I saw him the next day. He'd already <laughs> read it in twenty four hours. So incredible. Oh, that's crazy. Um, but it was basically even when you when you win, you know, it could be luck. You know, it could be luck. So if you've got a seventy five percent chance of winning, um, but you lose, it doesn't mean to say that decision is wrong. Um, by the same token, mm-hmm. if you have a twenty five percent of winning. Uh, and you and you win, then it means it might be that you still made the wrong decision. But it's un- even when things go well, it's you unpicking the yeah. decisions that actually could be actually wrong. You just got yeah, lucky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I know we're kind of running out yeah, of time now, yeah. um, but that's wow. probably a conversation for another time. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, is there? Um, so obviously we've we've touched on a number of different uh, you know amazing topics. Um, is there any um, advice you want to l- leave our listeners with? Um, and then where can folks find you? Um, if they want to get involved with these programs that you're putting together. Lovely. And if you could leave our listeners with something that, you know, you, they need to hear. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I suppose one of the questions people always say to me, what would you change about yourself? Mm. <laughs> um, and it has, it's really made me think over the years of what that would be. Um, and I think for me, my, I would have said to my younger self, um, yeah, don't, don't take yourself t- as too seriously. Mm. Um, you know, there will be lots of failures, Mm. um, and just to not worry, I just, I used to worry so much about what other people used to think or do. And, um, you know, and that was a journey I had to go on was, was to change that outlook. And I think Mm. I wished I wasn't like that as, as a young person moving up. And I think I would have, you know. Yeah, I had, those are the things I had to change to 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 be that athlete on that day and, mm. and perform. And I think I wish I'd had that earlier. Mm. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, take a <laughs> take a break. It's been. It's normally me coughing away. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we went to this um, thing on Saturday night, and it was a uh, had a smoke machine, and we were dancing right in front of it. Oh, there and you I go. think it's since then. Yeah, it's it might be it. something. Having something could call you. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think what was the last? Oh yeah, and if people want to get hold of me, then uh, go to the website sallygunner.com. 
Instagram, all the usual social yeah. media. So, yeah. but yeah, love to love to chat to people. Excellent, yeah. excellent. Well, it's Fantastic. been lovely having you. Lovely, thank you. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Thank you, Sammy. Thank you. Thank you for listening to today's episode of Rocket Pod with Sally Gunnell. We had certainly lots of fun and delved into lots of interesting topics. When you get a moment, we'd love it if you could hop over to whatever platform you're listening to Rocket Pod on and leave us a quick review. Um, your comments help inspire us to pick more guests that are relevant to you on your journey. Yeah, there was quite a few things today that we, we covered with Sally. The thing that stood out the most for me was uh, making sure that you're on top of your mindset. Uh, you can train every day, uh, get where you want to be physically. But, you know, if up here you don't have it on lock, then it's going to be really hard to perform at the top, top level. Yeah, and for me, actually, it was um, kind of a holistic approach to wellness. So it's good to get active and get moving. It's never too late to start. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think another thing that, you know, Sally highlighted was, you know, um, there's different seasons for different things. I mean, Sally, you know, with her um, her career as a gold Olympian and then transitioning to a per- personal and wellness coach and public speaker um, and just being intentional. Um, and it's kind of building those incremental habits um, to kind of, I guess, manifest themselves to to ch- to um, positive mm-hmm. change, really. Definitely. So. Um, I love the their holistic approach to wellness. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, a little little bit that really intrigued me a lot, and you guys can let us know if you want us to delve into it a bit more. But for me, the idea of being in flow, being in the zone, mm. uh, the story of when she didn't really remember anything of how when when she was running, um, I can relate to that a lot in music and in, in in sports as well. So. Would love to speak to more guests regarding that topic. So let us know if you guys would, would be interested in that too. Yeah, it's that mental preparedness piece as well, mm-hmm. isn't it? So, um, and, that, and I think as Sally develops her programs, um, we will uh, make you guys aware of them. I think um, some of them are still building and growing. So um, we'll keep you updated. And we'd love to have Sally back, um, you know, in a few years time when she's um, a bit further ahead with her current project. So, yeah, part um, three. Part three. <laughs> uh, remember to subscribe. Let us know your thoughts in the comments and make sure to follow us online so you don't miss a beat. Have a great week ahead.